In this video, I'll play a full lethal company game with an AI that I made to see what's the largest quota we can get to. If you're watching this video without watching the first part, I really recommend watching that first. So you can see how the AI was made and better understand what's happening in this run. The link to that video is the first in the description below. But if you can't bother, here is a quick recap. My in-game friend died in an unfortunate accident, so I decided to make an AI to replace him. The AI's name is Roberto and his main task is to stay on the ship and give me map updates. He does this by taking screenshots of the map, processing it, applying a grid, and then converting it to text which can then be sent in the in-game text chat. Roberto is also able to flash radar boosters to counter giants, and order the dropship to distract the dogs. So with this backstory in mind, let's see how the run went. The goal for the run will be to beat 10 quotas, which is a challenging but still reasonable milestone. I'll also be keeping track of the quota value and how much loot I have on the ship on the top left of the screen to help you follow along in the run. In the first quota, the first thing I did was land in the company so I can buy tools and set up Roberto on the terminal without losing time. After that, I headed to Assurance for the first day. Other than me missing the shortcut jump at the start, the day was fairly uneventful. I ended up collecting 193 points worth of loot. This takes us to the second day. March was clear, so I went there hoping to find some beehives. I did not find any beehives. And this little shit stole one of my bottle boxes. I ended up with 199 points worth of loot. On the third day, March and Assurance had conditions, so I went to Vow instead, again hoping that I'll find some beehives. This time, I did find not one, but two beehives, and secured them both on the ship's railing. At this point, it was already 4 pm, but I still decided to go into the facility for some more loot. I got three loot items and a face hug. After dealing with my new little friend, I headed back to the ship. Unfortunately, during takeoff, I was only able to get one of the beehives on the ship, because I ran too early and got critical by the bees. I ended the day with 189 points worth of loot. After selling all the loot I had on the ship, I was still 33 points short of going to Titan, so I ended up going to Dine instead. The first day of the second quota was fairly uneventful, although I did come across a very chill spider. I ended the day with 366 points worth of loot. The second day was similarly unexciting. I got an early ghost girl and the giant spawned at 3 pm, which ultimately made me leave early. I ended the day with 319 points worth of loot. The third day I had a fantastic loot run. By 10.30 am I already had 298 points worth of loot. And that's before I even found the kitchen, which was loaded. Moving the loot to the ship took 5 journeys, which were mostly peaceful, until the last journey. I ended the day with 9 loot items worth 636 points, making this the best day so far. For the third quota, I was finally able to buy a radar booster and go to Titan, which makes me think that perhaps I wasn't as stingy with selling loot as I should have been. The first day was another good loot day. The fire exit led directly into a storage room with 5 loot items. The main entrance also had a closed storage room which I cleared up. After moving the loot into the ship, I went back for round 2. But the jester was not a big fan of the idea, so I decided to call it a day. I ended up with 429 points worth of loot. The second day was a lot less fortunate as I died early to a nutcracker. I only collected 134 points worth of loot. The third day was interesting to say the least. Initially things were going smoothly. The apparatus room was right next to the main entrance and there was a lot of loot scattered close by. After collecting the loot and as I was moving it to the ship, a giant spawned very early around 2.30 pm. This was inconvenient, but I just kept the radar booster in my inventory and finished moving the loot with no issues. I then left the radar booster flashing in front of the ship to keep the area safe while I went to get the apparatus. When I came back, this happened. Yep, I fell right on top of a dog. A dog that was stuck there being stunned by the booster that I placed. Oh, it's working. Oh, that's why they were there. This mistake cost me the apparatus and my radar booster. But regardless, I still made 516 points worth of loot, which is pretty good. The first day of the fourth quota was the best loot day in the whole run. I started off by going into the fire exit, which led directly into a storage room with 4 loot items. 
While getting those, I noticed the grid map was telling me that there were more items in the vicinity. Turns out there was another storage room with six items that led into a stairway that had two more items, which then connected to the main entrance with one more loot item and a complimentary bracken thrown into the mix of course. I had all this loot outside by 1 pm and in the ship by 3.30 pm. I then went in a second time and found four more items before ending the day. By the end I had collected a total of 17 items worth 968 points, making this day the best loot day in the whole run, although we are yet to see the worst day. The second day was uneventful. I faced no monsters inside or outside and was able to get 435 points worth of loot. The third day was much less fortunate, Titan was stormy and the giant spawned early at 2 pm. I ended the day with 291 points worth of items. Okay. Titan was eclipsed in the first day of the fifth quota, but I decided to risk it. Things initially went pretty well. Both the fire exit and the main entrance had a good amount of loot near them, and I found the apparatus room, but both doors were locked. I also found a pretty cold bolt, but a mimic wanted to fight me for it. And there is a freaking mask. After beating his ass and rightfully keeping ownership of the bolt, I was only able to move half of the loot before the giant caught me. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. No. I got a total of 262 points worth of loot. The second day I had a great start. Both the fire exit and the main entrance led into storage rooms. While I was busy moving the loot, Roberto had made a new friend. I saw this as a threat to his productivity, so I ensured his friend will not visit again. I ended the day with 586 points worth of loot. The third day I was able to do two loot runs, however I couldn't get the last few pieces into the ship. I ended up with 494 points worth of loot. At this point in the run, I made a quick calculation, and it turns out I was in a worse position than I initially thought. To successfully complete 10 quotas, I would need to get almost 1350 points worth of loot every quota, or 450 points per day. Very challenging, but certainly possible. Moving on to the 6th quota, not much happened. The first day Titan was eclipsed again, still this turned out to be the most fruitful day in the quota. I ended up getting 638 points worth of loot. The second day I got 370 points worth of loot. And for the third day, I ended up with 407 points worth of loot. The total loot for this quota adds up to 1415 points, meaning that so far we're on track to meet the 10th quota. The 7th quota was much better loot-wise. On the first day, Titan had the mansion interior, which is bad because it means the map will be larger and the loot will be more spread out. But I welcomed the change as I was getting sick of the facility. After gathering and moving the first batch of loot to the ship, I went in again to finish looting the kitchen I found earlier. Shortly after that I was confronted by what seemed to be a resident of the property, and he was angry, likely because I looted their kitchen, so I beat him over the head with a shovel until he lost consciousness. By the end of the day I had gathered 626 points worth of loot. The second day the fire exit was great, it led directly into a storage room, and the maze beyond it had loot scattered close by. I ended up with 505 points worth of loot. Not much happened on the third day, I got 501 points worth of loot. The total loot collected in this quota came up to 1632, making it the second best quota in the whole run. It also dropped the amount of loot I have to collect per day, from 460 to 420 points. This takes us to the first day of the 8th quota. At this point, I was much more confident. If I continue on the same base as the last two quotas, I should be able to beat the 10th quota with flying colors. All I have to do is to not do something stupid. Hell. Hell. This was a huge setback to me. From that point onwards, I would have to collect 475 points worth of loot per day if I want to beat the 10th quota. Regardless, I carried on. The second day didn't go great either. The first enemy that spawned was a jester, and there was barely any loot near the entrance and the fire exit. Roberto then malfunctioned, which meant I had to stop for a bit to get him working again. And while moving loot, the dog spawned very early at 1.30 pm. I ended the day with 218 points worth of loot. Day 13 went much better. I did two loot runs and got the apparatus. I ended the day with 440 points worth of loot. The total loot collected for this quota is 658 points, making it the second worst quota in the whole run. This setback means that if I want to beat the 10th quota, I would have to collect around 520 points per day for each of the 6 remaining days.
Moving on to the ninth quota, the first day Titan was stormy. I first cleared the fire exit, which had the kitchen nearby. Then I went to main entrance and was immediately met with a mimic. He was initially chill, but when I told him I had a cool shovel outside, he got really excited. About to explode. After this, I finished gathering loot and while moving it to the ship, I got another victim. By the end of the day, I had collected 354 points worth of loot. The second day, Titan was eclipsed, and since I did not want to risk it, I went to dine instead. I found the kitchen early into the day, and had a close call with a coil head. After escaping, I started moving loot. The first journey was peaceful, but the second one, I got bent by a giant and had to use the radar booster. I ended the day with 392 points. Better than the first day, but still nowhere near the 520 points we need per day. The third day was the best one in the quota. The fire exit led directly into the kitchen, and I found a lot of loot early on. After transferring it and coming back, I had this bizarre encounter. So you were waiting for me. After this I quickly checked the main entrance before calling it a day. I got 467 points worth of loot. Oh boy. I was now at the 10th quota, and my chances of beating it were dim. Regardless of that, I focused on making the most of what's left of my run. The first day I went to Titan, and had a good loot run. I ended up with 585 points worth of loot. On the second day, Titan was eclipsed, so I went to dine instead. After I finished collecting and moving the loot from the main entrance, I went to the fire exit for round 2. I found a nutcracker and immediately wanted to get revenge for what happened in quota 3. My first attempt was unsuccessful because the nutcracker saw me early. So I left for a bit to move some loot I found and then returned for a second attempt. By the end of the day I had collected 419 points worth of loot. By this point it's clear that I'm not going to beat quota 10, but regardless I still wanted to make most of the last day. I went back to titan and had a great start with the fire exit. It led directly into a loaded storage room. Maybe I'll make the quota after all. I then found the apparatus room near the main entrance. After moving the initial batch of loot and successfully getting the apparatus to the ship, I went into the facility again for round 2 but got ambushed by a snare flea. I kept trying to find my shovel, but couldn't find it in time. By the end, I had collected 494 points worth of loot. Now it was time for me to go to the company and sell loot one last time. I got to the company and sold everything I had on the ship. I even sold Roberto for good measure, but unfortunately I did not have enough. And it became clear that quota 10 is the end of our run. After saying goodbye to the company, it was time for me and Roberto to face the inevitable. After playing the full run with the AI, it's now time for me to rate it. And I'll do that using two different standards, entertainment and practicality. The score for entertainment is 7 out of 10. Was it fun? Absolutely. I had a blast trying out the different versions of the AI, and making it work in vanilla as if it's a real player was very fulfilling. The reason I did not give it a 10 out of 10 is because of the practicality issues I'm about to discuss, which made the AI irritating to deal with in some cases. For practicality, I give the AI a score of 6 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, the AI did help me in the game and gave me much needed information about my surroundings. But it had one major flaw, the delay. You see, the AI took around 3 seconds to capture a screenshot, process it, leave the terminal, and finally send me the two messages. This seems like a small amount of time, but when you're in-game, 3 seconds is more than enough for you to change where you're looking or to leave the area you were in, making the grid that the AI sends difficult to follow. This meant that while in-game, I would occasionally have to stand still for a bit to make sure the grid was actually relative to where I was looking and where I was standing. This issue was much more prevalent in earlier versions of the AI, but with time I was able to make the code run faster, which made it much more bearable. So with this in mind, I would love to hear what you think in the comments. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for your time.